Question, what's the typical response for a physician who wants to know more about a colleague's skill level? It's not uncommon to hear a clinician use some version of the phrase, I would trust her to care for my family. This video was created to introduce you to what is a very interesting way of thinking about both learning and teaching. It's demonstrating something called an entrustable professional activity or EPA. We will cover what an EPA is, why it's important, what's involved in using EPAs during a rotation, and what's trust got to do with it. Here's a multiple choice question. What is an EPA? A, a unit of professional work. B, what's actually done during the clinician's day. C, something that can be assigned, measured, and observed. D, that same something that a supervisor could trust a learner to do independently or unsupervised. E, a way to teach and assess learners. F, all of the above. It's no surprise that each of these describes an EPA. Let's review some concrete examples. These are some EPAs for emergency medicine. Initiating and assisting in resuscitation of critically ill patients, performing basic procedures, providing airway management and ventilation, identifying and managing patients with emergency medical and surgical conditions. Each EPA is a unit of work and outlines something an emergency physician actually does. You could also imagine your resident being trusted to function independently for each of those activities, and so it's something on which a learner could both be observed and assessed. Why might an EPA be important in the context of teaching and learning? Two reasons are, one, confirming progress in performing key tasks of our specialty, and two, for feedback. First, let's talk about confirming a resident's progress. In CBD, we want to be sure that each resident can competently perform key tasks. By tracking them, our competency committee will have information to confirm who is making progress as expected and to identify early on if someone is needing some more support in a given area. Residents are to achieve and teachers are to ensure that the EPAs are achieved by the end of each stage of training. An EPA represents the integration of a large number of competencies into a manageable number of activities for learners. Also for supervising faculty to meaningfully assess during the training program. Remember the other reason? The second one is for feedback. For years, learners have been telling us they want more meaningful and helpful feedback. Feedback is one of the most effective ways to support a resident's growth and development. The most specific and meaningful feedback is based on what is directly observed. It is directly observing a specific EPA task and providing meaningful feedback about it. So what's trust got to do with it? The more a supervisor directly observes a learner, the more likely and easier it is to confirm that he or she trusts the learner to perform and act independently or unsupervised. And so, to bring it home, back to where I began, not just for learners by the end of their training program, but as a general professional aid, shouldn't we all aspire to be a clinician or colleagues with trust to take care of their family members?